for this time to learn about these ideas and as we learn about ourselves, may that strengthen our relationship with you all harm free in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, uh, continuing in the nature of personal reality, chapter 17, session 663, the top of page 338, we're going to begin with the word remember in the second paragraph. It says, remember Augustus in the case mentioned earlier in the book. It was in chapter 6. Augustus felt powerless considering power in terms of aggression and violence. So he isolated that portion of himself from himself and projected it into a quote second self. Only when this second self became operative could he display any power because his basic concept held aggressiveness and power as one however then the strength to act automatically meant the strength to be aggressive and here aggression was equated with violence now in its way that was a transference of a problem in a unique manner the need to act and be in control of action is paramount in conscious beings. Augustus therefore actually created from himself a position of power from which he could, at least for a while, operate. He had to pretend amnesia so as to hide this mechanism from himself. As long as power is equated with violence, then you will feel it is necessary to regulate normal aggression in your behavior. And considering power as violent, you will be afraid to act to some extent. You will then consider goodness and powerlessness to be somewhat synonymous and equate power with evil. Not wanting to face such, quote, evil, unquote, in yourself, you may then direct it outward and transfer it to another area. As a society, you may project it upon the criminal. As a nation, upon a foreign country. As an individual, you may place this power upon an employer a labor union, or any other segment of society. In whatever area you choose, though, you will feel relatively weak in comparison with the strength that you've projected outward. You meet your own denied power, you see, whenever you find yourself in a situation where you feel weak in comparison to another person or situation that frightens you. Power does not basically imply superior, superiority over, with the word over underlined. There is the power of love, for example, and the power to love. Both imply great action and vitality and an aggressive thrust that has nothing to do with violence. Yet many people have physical symptoms or suffer unpleasant situations because they are afraid to utilize their own power of action underline and equate power with aggression meaning violence. Such feelings arouse 
artificial guilt. The individual who speaks out most loudly for the death penalty feels that he himself should really be condemned to death to pay for the great aggression which is violence within him that he dares not express. Now I just have to pause for a second. That last sentence is not the general way people think as I understand it. However, it's very interesting. So I'm going to read it again. The individual who speaks out most loudly for the death penalty feels that he himself should really be condemned to death to pay for the great aggression which equated as violence within him that he dares not express. It's quite a statement. The criminal or murderer being executed dies for the quote evil unquote within each member of his society then and a magical transference takes place. So before we go on I just want to talk about this for a second. There's people who you hear say, oh, I could kill that person, or um, I would want to kill that person, or a variety of things that might hint that they have some of these feelings inside, and they wouldn't act on them, or they wouldn't, they dare not express them, okay? So what Seth is saying is that inside of us, are things generally that are somewhat buried or that we don't recognize how strong they are and therefore we have projected them out onto other people or in other aspects of society. Let's start with that next sentence, the word love. Love is propelled by all of the elements of natural ag aggression and it is powerful. Yet because you have made such divisions between good and evil, love appears to be weak and violence strong. This is reflected in many levels of your activities. The devil becomes a powerful evil figure, for example. Hate is seen as far more efficient than love. The male in your society is taught to personify aggressiveness with all of those antisocial attitudes that he cannot normally demonstrate. The criminal mind expresses these for him. Hence, the ambiguous attitudes on the part of society in which renegades are often romanticized. The detective and his criminal wear versions of the same mask. Following such ideas, you end up with segregations in which the ill, being powerless, are isolated. The criminals are kept together and the old are held in institutions or in cultural ghettos with their own kind. Transferences of personal problems are all involved here and clusters of belief. 
The criminal element represents the individual's own feared and unfaced aggressions. These fears are closeted on an individual basis and those people who express them socially are imprisoned. The enforced incarceration of violent men often leads to a riot and the private closeting of normal aggression often brings psychological rioting and outbursts of physical symptoms. In all cases, little effort is made to understand the basic problems beneath, and the social segregations merely build up the pressure, so to speak, so that those with like beliefs are kept in situations that only perpetuate the basic causes. Unknowingly, the sick often give up their power to act in a healthy manner to the physicians. The doctors accept this mandate since they share the same framework of belief. So, the medical profession obviously needs patients as badly as the ill needs the hospitals. Society as you know it, not understanding the nature of normal aggression, considers it violent. The prisons and law enforcement agencies need criminals in the same way that criminals need them, for they operate within the same system of belief. Each accepts violence as a method of behavior and survival. If you do not understand that you create your own reality, then you may assign all good results to a personified God and need the existence of a devil to explain the undesirable reality. So churches as they now exist in Western society need a devil as well as a God. Natural aggression is simply the power to act. And we'll stop there. And I think that statement will be what we'll use so that we have this all clear. However, before we pick that, I want to go back to one that's almost as important. On page 338, the second sentence in the third paragraph. And it says this, The need to act and be in control of action is paramount in conscious beings. And then the sentence that we'll pick today is, Natural aggression is simply the power to act. So somehow though I want us to also keep this other sentence because it's an explanation of so much that is a normal part of our day that it's almost like an invisible belief if you meet someone, first you want to know their name, which helps us in referring to them, and then most of the time you want to know what they do. Okay. And part of the reason that would explain why we think that way is this sentence. The need to act and be in control of action is paramount in conscious beings. Therefore, we would just naturally assume that's how you're going to 
understand somebody else is by knowing what they do. It's not necessarily true, but that's one of the first things we want to know about. All right. So how do we... I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to, I want to put both of these sentences... I, I want them both to be related to this session. And uh, let's see, if I had to guess, today's date is the 14th, is that right? That's correct. August 14th, 2013. So we'll use both of these sentences then to... summarize what we've learned, although the details of what he's saying are, for all intents and purposes, going to be considered very controversial. Um, and that's why I paused when he spoke about people, how much they project out. We, we think we understand projection a little bit, but not to this extent that he says that the people who speak out most loudly for the death penalty feel that he himself should really be condemned to death to pay for the great aggression within him that he dares not express. In other words, he knows that he would kill somebody if that had happened to him or, you know, and all this, but that's okay because that's in self-defense, but really he knows that killing somebody, even in self-defense, is probably wrong. And the fact that he has enough power inside of him to know that he knows he would kill somebody under any circumstances, he feels guilty about. So therefore, that all gets projected out. And even more, even deeper belief that beneath that would be the belief that possibly, under certain circumstances, he knows that he might act in a way that is has, he has so much power within him that he dares not express it so that he feels that he himself should be condemned to death and that gets projected out onto the criminal element and that those certain individuals should actually be put to death the death penalty that's that's pretty controversial I would say I uh, actually understand it because um, I went through a period when I was very young of understanding a great power within myself and personally felt like I had to not express it because it uh, was clear to me that the power that I felt didn't have any good outlet in society so that might be part of the problem uh, of what we've created in today's civilization that uh, we might want to look at finding ways to allow ourselves and others either ways to change their beliefs so we don't go through this or uh, outlets for projecting out our great power of action. All right. Well, we'll have a closing prayer unless... Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Well, dear God, may we take these words and consider them and give them consideration in the sense that uh, we reach some sort of understanding. And may this help us lead more fulfilling lives, all harm-free, which can spill over and help those in our hearts and minds. In the name of Jesus, amen.